Hello, I'm Elliot Hastie, and I'm here as part of the Australian Investment Council's Good News Story series. As the world continues to grapple with the unprecedented times caused by the COVID pandemic, many businesses have had to innovate and reinvent themselves in order to sustain their businesses during these tough times. This series by the Australian Investment Council focuses on the good news stories of how private capital backed businesses have been able to reinvent themselves and in doing so have been able to support their employees as well as local and global communities. Let's take a listen. Swoop Aero is an autonomous drone delivery network. It delivers life-changing medical equipment across five different countries, including Mozambique and the Democratic Republic of Congo. It delivers equipment such as medicine, but of course COVID came along and the business had to pivot to deliver more services to countries in need. To tell us more, we are joined by Head of Commercial at Swoop, Sabrina Levine. Sabrina, hi. Hello. Thanks for having me here today. Well, can... Thank you for joining us. I think I just want to take a step back and get you to tell us more about Swoop and what it is you guys do. Fantastic. Yes. So Swoop is a, an Australian drone powered health logistics company. So as you just said, and our vision is to transform the way the world moves essential supplies by making access to the air seamless. How we do that? We basically integrate air transport into the last and the first mile of the health supply chain. Um, we do that by deploying two-way logistics services and we utilize our own fully integrated aviation system. Our goal as a company is to provide a sustainable logistics service to 100 million people by 2025. Do you want me to give you a little more background about our journey so far? I would love a bit more background and also, I guess, tell us the kind of people that you are delivering these um, medical supplies to. Fantastic. Yeah. So the type of people we're delivering the medical supplies to are varied. So those are people who would, who are otherwise struggling to receive medical supplies. So those are people in remote and rural um, communities at the moment. But we've also found a need um, through COVID to deliver in different areas than where we've delivered so far. But I'll just take a step back and um, give you um, our journey so far at Swoop. So we were founded in 2017 by former Air Force pilot Eric Pack and robotics engineer Josh Tepper. And the company was founded on the back of a question from the Australian government as to whether a drone could be used to transport chemotherapy into rural Australia. And the answer was yes, it was te technically possible, but both our founders found the real question to be, what did a system look like that could do that sustainably, reliably and safely every day of the week? So both founders combined the experiences and transformed um, the Hercules aircraft into a 20 kilo 3D printed electric drone. And we also simplified all the systems and processes surrounding aviation um, using software to build a full logistics system and since then, and you've touched on that before, we've um, been awarded a number of uh, contracts. We were awarded uh, the first commercial contract for vaccine delivery uh, by UNICEF and the Vanuatu government in 2018. And we became the first company to do that. And the following year, we have done that in the DR Congo with the Guardian Gates Foundation. Um, and that is where we're expanding further at the moment as well. Um, in that same year, we started uh, operations in northern Malawi with USAID and in southern Malawi with UK and UNICEF. And we have two teams currently on, on route, en route um, to Mozambique. Um, so one to Mozambique and our uh, CEO just arrived in Congo to expand operations there. And I'm not sure what time it is. I think it's evening. So he um, just had, would have finished uh, meetings with the Ministry of Health um, in Congo today, which is really exciting. Um, so I think that's that's a bit about the background, and I think what's what's been interesting is since we uh, started operations, we've received a number of awards and prizes, which recognised our impact and um, our innovation. The first one was in 2018, and we received a New York Good Tech Award, and the latest one um, is announced um, this week, which is uh, we've been recognised by the Australian Business Award as the winner in the category Product Innovation. I think that gives a bit of a roundup of the background at Swoop and where we've come from. Absolutely, and it's quite impressive. You know, it's not a particularly old company and you're using brand new 
um, technology that you have developed, and you've developed not only the back end of it as well, but also the front end being the drones. But you organise all the logistics behind it as well, don't you? Exactly. So um, it's very easy to uh, think about only the drone when you think about uh, Swoop Aero, but there's much more behind it. So the drone is only one of many components that make the system um, run. So we have um, software that actually enable uh, what we do and that um, use mis machine learning and AI to be able to perform and provide the, the, the system in a way and the logistics infrastructure in a way that we provide it. Now tell me, what sort of medical equipment were you supplying um, to these countries, to these areas prior, I guess, to 2020? And what has changed as a result of COVID and the pandemic? Um, so in terms of uh, deliveries, um, at first, not much changed. So people still needed the same medication, they still needed uh, the same supplies. What changed, however, and that's an example in Malawi, is that ground transport was heavily impacted. So in some um, areas we were not able to, or motorbikes or roads were not, uh, cars were not able to go from A to B. So uh, the community started to rely much more heavily on, um, on air transport. And we've also seen in Malawi at the beginning of the year, as a result, an increase in 300% between March and April of the um, infrastructure and the network, which just highlights the need for this type of technology, um, particularly during a pandemic and to create more resilience across the health supply chain. Um, so that was in the country. I think um, if we look one tap, step back, there has been um, like elements that changed as a result of the pandemic as well um, back home. So we've started working from home. There has been more uncertainty around employment, there has been limited ability to travel and also an increase in, um, in telehealth. And all of those have affected Swoop on different levels. I'm not sure if I'm actually responding to your question, but I'll, um, I think those are elements that have played into how we have been running the business as well since March. So being a global business, um, the ability to travel probably represents one of the most, or the limited ability to travel, I should say, um, represents one of, one of the most challenging parts of the pandemic for us. So. We simultaneously saw an increase in demand and need for the infrastructure, uh, while also being limited in our ability to fly to where those demands came from. So our brand promise normally is that we are able to get a service up and running in 72 hours. So that is because the aircraft is 3D printed. So I do that movement because that's the movement of the 3D printers, which is um, just bizarre. But um, that I'm doing it, sorry. So essentially the uh, printed aircraft fits in a bike box and it can be deployed rapidly to anywhere in the world. Um, and that was only before the pandemic, but in March, the Australian government issued the global travel ban. And what that means for us is, as I just mentioned, our Australian team was not able to leave the Australian territory, which delayed some major operations um, that were supposed to start earlier this year. And for those members who were already overseas, um, who were in the middle of operations, we basically had to repatriate them um, as our global insurance policies were invalidated by the travel ban. But the very positive here is that we hire, or fortunately, is that we hire um, teams within communities uh, where we operate. So if we go back to the example in Malawi, we operated already in March and we had recruited a, a team of five local team members. We're basically able to continue running the operations smoothly. So they continued transporting the same medications, but they saw an increase in the service, as I said before. Um, so we delivered everything from um, pathology samples to vaccines to um, HIV tests. So those are the type of medications that we have uh, transported before and that we are still transporting while also going towards, um, but we also saw a big increase, sorry, in, in PPE medications, uh, PPE equipment and um, COVID related medications. So one of the, another adventure I should probably highlight is we had um, we had by then proven the safety of our operations to the Malawian Civil Aviation Authority and therefore also became the first company in the world to pilot an aircraft from outside of its country of operation. So our two pilots flew back to Australia, but we're continuing to operate the planes um, in Malawi, which is a very exciting achievement of this year. Um, so that was one big change is the limited, limited ability to travel for us. And the second level on which um, 
we were impacted, which is Sauna. We could not necessarily predict in March is that um, we've been experiencing difficulties in hiring new team members. So a large number of us have moved from Melbourne, either from overseas, as you may be able to hear, or in the state to become part of SERP. And that is mainly because the skill sets we're recruiting for are quite specific. At first, we thought that the pandemic would allow us to recruit from a larger pool of applicants, um, but we found that people were less likely to move from jobs in uncertain times. Um, but we've seen that this is slowly relaxing, which is um, which is very exciting again. And I think um, the last point um, that I've touched on is like the international um, travel restrictions that were placed on Australia, um, and as a result limited our inability to travel or our ability to travel overseas has basically meant that as a business we have also sort of repositioned our focus um, on the impact and value that we can create and generate close to home, so in Australia. And many people don't necessarily realise that, but Australia faces the same kind of um, infrastructure and transportation issues that are experienced in low resource settings. Uh, for example, if you travel 100 kilometres out of a major city, the um, access um, to essential health supply chain dramatically goes down. So it may take, take up to eight hours to drive to the nearest, nearest medical facility, which is not too dissimilar to um, what is experienced in some of the countries we're operating in. So in, in, for example, in DR Congo and Malawi. Um, it sounds like uh, Swoop's yeah. certainly done, done a lot of work um, and has actually been able to you know, pivot quite successfully and create really good outcomes uh, for the business. What are some of the outcomes that you'll be able to use from this experience uh, moving forward? I think some of the outcomes that we will be able to continue using is that um, we've um, we've basically started to basically slowly pivot towards a more kind of like platform partnership model, which basically allows us to um, work with um, within countries um, and within regions where we would not normally create value and generate impact. And um, we basically provide our platform, so the hardware and the software components, um, to new type of partners. So those are partners that will um, be working um, in areas such as um, like wildlife monitoring in national parks in South Africa or uh, beach communities across Australia or aerial data collection like collection for flood mapping or natural disasters in, in Malawi and, for example, emergency responses in the, in the Pacific. So I think that's um, less an outcome, but it's just been a natural evolution for us as a company to move towards um, those those different areas, but also to refocus um, on, on the Australian market, which has also meant that we are looking at or we, we have been looking much more closely at certifying um, the vehicles, which is one of the elements we're working um, closely with uh, CASA and um, the FAA was. I'm not sure if I responded to your question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you did. Um, and you're backed by Tempest Partners. What support have you received from them and other investors during this time? We actually did um, get an amazing support from, uh, from, from our investors. I think we've, we've got an amazing group of investors who have 100% bought into the Swoop vision. So Tempus and uh, Radcliffe Capital have really demonstrated um, by leading the Series A, um, which we closed during the pandemic, um, that they believe in the vision, that they believe in the value that we're creating and that they see and project uh, themselves alongside Swoop. Um, and both investors can see the obvious value of using um, our technology and infrastructure and health logistics. Um, but besides supporting um, like the organization through the latest race, our investors um, are also supporting the team on different levels. So they're meeting with the exec team on a weekly basis and provide guidance, expertise, advice. Um, but they're also supporting the wider team through those uncertain times. So all of us have access to um, expert-led therapy and um, coaching sessions. And um, where I had crowded in Melbourne, as I said earlier, in the second lockdown um, had had an impact on morale and mental. And um, it is well known that well-being can affect workers and like teams on the bottom line. So we've been very fortunate to uh, have investors who are supporting us in um, in like creating more well-being and um, like creating this more positive environment. Our investors are really supporting us in, in achieving that and buying into our vision and supporting and elevating the exact team and helping us instill a culture of well-being within the team. 
Well, it sounds like it's been a very big and very busy year for Swoop Aero. We wish you all the best in the future. Thank you so much, Sabrina Ravali, for joining me. Thank you so much.